It is a known fact that Japan is best explored by train, and this is quite apparent given the comprehensive and efficient railway network system that they have. But of course, this also comes along with the fact that there are quite a number of Japanese railway companies out there. And as a traveler, I will totally understand if you feel quite overwhelmed in choosing like let's say the best tourist train pass that you will use if you are going to explore a certain area or part of Japan. Rest assured, I'm here to help you out because just recently I was able to travel Kansai region by trying three different railway companies. And each of these companies covers certain areas in Kansai that will not only help you save money but also time and effort. Now for this topic, I will be making it into a mini series in which for this first video, I will be discussing with you the first rail pass that you can consider when traveling in Kansai and that is the Hankyu or Hanshin tourist pass. These two train passes are respectively under the Hankyu Railway Company and the Hanshin Electric Railway Company. So for the Hankyu tourist pass, I would definitely recommend getting this one if you want unlimited rides on Hankyu service train lines that go to places like Osaka, Kyoto, and Kobe. And currently, you can purchase a one-day or two-day pass in which the two-day pass can be used non-continuously. On the other hand, you can get the Hanshin Tourist Pass if you are only going to explore places like Osaka and Kobe. After all, it is a bit more affordable and it has a one-day validity for unlimited rides on Hanshin service train lines. Now with all that said and done, I bet you are curious for ideas on places that you can go to with the use of a Hankyu or Hanshin Tourist Pass. So without further ado, I will share with you my itinerary as I made use of these two train passes. For the first day of my Kansai adventure, I made use of the two-day Hankyu Tourist Pass in order to set off to Kyoto's famous district of Arashiyama, a destination that can easily be reached as a day trip from Osaka. Now, right now, our first activity is that we are going to do a rickshaw ride. I think this is going to be my first time to try one because I've seen them before in Asakusa and Kyoto but I've never really tried it until today so this will be fun For this traditional rickshaw or jinrikisha activity, I suggest booking with Ebisuya which is located near Togetsukyo Bridge I recommend them because their guides will take you to local and hidden spots in Arashiyama that no taxi or bus can take you to. In fact, you can even ask for a personalized itinerary. And to give you some ideas, here were some highlights that I got to see. Party lunch, I went off to Chasanraku to see Japan's interesting tea culture as well as experience a tea ceremony workshop where I got to learn more about the local tea and how it is made. Once I had my fill of Arashiyama sites, I headed off to the center of Kyoto to explore the vibrant Nishiki market.
So here in Nishiki Market, they have a lot of Kyoto foods that you should try. But one of them is this soy milk sauna. So they have it in different flavors, but one of their best sellers is this original one. So let's go and give it a try. <laughs> very soft. It's actually really good. Even without any sugar. Meanwhile, another one of their best sellers is this other flavor which has soy milk and brown sugar. I like it. And actually, I think that I like this one more which has the brown sugar sauce. It brings a whole dynamic into the taste. So you guys should definitely give this a try. Meanwhile, they also have another option in their shop wherein you can buy this soy milk and soft ice cream. As for the other shops that you can check out in Nishiki Market, do take note of the following. The next day, with my Hankyu Tourist Pass, I explored the outskirts of Osaka by making a stop at Mino Park. This is the location that is famous for its waterfall and fall foliage during autumn season. And from Hankyu Mino Station, you can start a scenic 45-minute hiking trail to the park. But if you don't want to take a long walk, there is a nearby taxi service that can take you to Mino Park. takes about 15 minutes hiking but of course you can also take the taxi which parks somewhere over there and then you just have to walk less than one kilometer in order to get here and it's a bit of an uphill climb when you go back but either way this view makes a lot of Once you're done with your visit, don't forget to check out a local sweet snack called the Smomiji Tempura. So now that we are done with the Mino Waterfall, we are now heading over to the Cup Noodles Museum. Now, this is actually something that I've seen online for quite a while now, so I'm quite excited to finally try it. Now, there are two branches of the Cup Noodles Museum here in Japan. There's one in Yokohama, but there's also one here, which actually has free admission, and the one in Yokohama does not. Moreover, it helps to note that this is the original branch. They give you these materials to use and design it. And the important thing to remember is that 
you can only write on it or design your cup under this line right here. And then after you do that, you also need to put the date for the day on this section right here so that you remember to eat it within a month. And then now the next step is to fill it up with the ingredients that I like. And I think according to this guide, I can select one broth. You have these choices. And then after that, I can select four ingredients. Once you're done making your own cup noodles, don't forget to explore the fun hands-on exhibits to learn more about its history. You guys have seen me wear a kimono here in Japan for numerous times already but I've never tried on a Miko attire. So Miko basically means that it's a shrine maiden and in this town I as well as you guys can get to try it on. Before the day ended, I made a last stop to the city of Kobe. It is definitely well known for its delicious local brand of Wagyu or Japanese beef, but there are also other things that you can do like visiting Arima Onsen or for this particular case, watching the sunset from the Kobe port tower. Overall, I hope this serves as a helpful start for coming up with itinerary ideas for your Kansai exploration. And for more information and complete details, don't forget to check out my blog post link which is included in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned for part 2 of this Kansai series.